So you have decided to adopt a microservices architecture? That's great. Now, how do we make them talk? Hey guys, it's me, your tech bud, and it's time to demystify microservice communication. Let's dive into this straight away. There are two broad ways of making microservices talk. There's the simple yet effective brokerless design where all services talk to each other directly. And then there's the super flexible broker design where all communications flow through a messaging broker. Now, I know this sounds like a very mild difference, but trust me, this small difference will go on and make a huge architectural impact. And there's also this third type of making microservices communicate, which I've kind of picked up over the years, and it involves making microservices communicate without them actually communicating. I know it, it sounds insane, but stick on till the end to find out. Okay, one more thing. To explain the different types, uh, I'm going to take two examples which involve communication between an email and a user service. The first example is a user signing up, which is then followed by sending out a welcome email. This is what I call the write or mutation path because this kind of ends up changing some state in our system. The second example is retrieving the email stats of a user, you know, things like the open rate, the click through rate, etc along with details of that user. Both of these examples are going to require interaction between the user and email service. Let's start with the brokerless design. Here, all microservices talk to each other directly via APIs. It's the same as how the front-end and back-end talk, where the back-end team provides an API or a contract to the front-end team, who can then invoke these APIs whenever needed. The only difference here would be that instead of the front end and back end, we have microservices talking to each other using things like HTTP or gRPC or whatever. The right path is exactly how you would expect it to be. The user service would get a sign up request. It would add a user in the database and then call an API on the email service to send out a welcome email. The read path is pretty simple as well. The request would first come into the email service to get the email stats of the user, which would then call the user service to get supplementary information from there. Right? Wrong. You would actually have an aggregator service which would get the initial request. It would fire appropriate queries on the user and email service to get the information we need, stitch the data together, and then send back a consolidated response. The thing is, a lot of services could depend on that API. So if the user service breaks for some reason tomorrow, a lot of services would be affected. Making services talk to each other directly is called tight coupling. And the problem here is that instead of building a microservices architecture like we intended to, we end up building a tightly coupled distributed monolith. A distributed monolith is worse than a traditional monolith because all your API calls here are happening over the network. Try debugging that. Many veterans have warned us about this problem years ago and several big projects have already made the shift to monoliths from microservices just because of this problem. I'm not trying to scare you away from microservices. I use them a lot as well. I'm just trying to say that if your services are depending on each other a lot, you may want to merge them into one. Creating an aggregator service helps us in some use cases because it kind of becomes the single point of coupling. So tomorrow, if another API breaks, it's only the aggregator service which would have to be updated. And a pro tip, GraphQL is a great tool as an aggregator. If I ever make a video on this, which I probably will, the link will be up there. So that's the brokerless design. It's simple, it's fast, and it's super easy to get started with. Let's make one minor change in our write path. What if after a successful user signup, I want to update my dashboard service and a BI tool as well? We simply make the user service call their APIs one by one, right? You said yes, didn't you? Man, if I was your user service, I would be pissed. This is where our second type comes in, the broker design. Here we introduce a messaging or pop-sub broker like RabbitMQ and make all the communications flow through that. 
A pop-up broker is basically a communication system where a sender publishes messages on a topic on one side and the interested participants can consume or subscribe for those messages on the other. I really like to compare this with WhatsApp groups. Your your family WhatsApp group is a topic. You and your cousins are unfortunate subscribers. Your uncle with all the crazy conspiracy theories is the publisher. Whatever your uncle publishes is received by everyone. The only difference would be that your uncle doesn't really need to be a part of the group to publish messages to it. So yeah, it's a more scary version of WhatsApp groups. Let's have a look at the architectural impact of a broker design. First, the user service doesn't really need to track the APIs of the email service or any other service it doesn't care about. Instead, it can now describe the topic and the format of the message it will publish and the interested participants can subscribe to that. Second, we can now shift to asynchronous processing without having to make the consumers themselves asynchronous. What I mean by that is that the user service can return back a response as soon as it publishes a message. It doesn't really have to wait for the email service to be done. The messaging broker would make sure that automatic retries happen in case of failures. And obviously, the third one is that the user service need not be updated when a fourth service comes into the picture. In a way, this is communication by means of events. The user service broadcasts an ad user event. The email service and all the other interested participants subscribe for that event and the messaging broker acts as a medium to propagate these events. This is what we call an event driven architecture. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. There are a couple of things you need to keep in mind before you can adopt a broker design. I think you've already spotted the first one. The broker is the single point of failure. If the broker goes down, our entire system comes to a standstill. This also means that the broker now becomes the bottleneck, limiting the maximum number of events that can flow through our system. Second, implementing things like rollback when a consumer has some error is going to be very difficult now. The reason is that eventing is a one-way street. Events flow from left to right or right to left, however you like to see it. The point is, once an event is propagated, there is very little the source can do. In a brokerless design, you could wait for the API call to return and take a rollback action on the response. It's just not possible anymore. And finally, eventing doesn't really help when it comes to read parts. Sure, you can do things like RPC on RabbitMQ, but you're not really gaining a lot of value there. So time to answer the burning question. Which one should you use? Probably both. If you're new to this, I would suggest you try to condense your microservices into one as much as possible and stick to a brokerless design. This will help your team move fast and keep all the moving pieces down to a minimum. As time goes on, you can break down into multiple microservices and even introduce a broker if you feel the need for it. But you know what? I'm still not satisfied. There's a big problem lurking around in our right paths of both the designs. What would happen if the user service adds the user in the database but fails before it can publish a message or make the API call? The email would never be sent at all. And if this was a mission critical part of your application, this would turn out to be a disaster. The bonus I was talking about at the beginning of this video is making a minor modification in the broker design. What if we make the database publish the event instead of our user service? After all, a user is considered added once a record has been inserted in the database, right? So this is actually possible and it's called change data capture. Here, another app monitors the database logs and publishes events on every database change. This way, the event is guaranteed to be published even if the user service or the CDC engine itself fails by simply replaying the logs from where we left off. Well, that's it for now. I know I've brushed through several topics real quick, but I'm planning to make a dedicated video on CDC and event-driven architectures and dive deeper into this topic. I'll publish an event once that video goes live, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon. See what I did there? I've tried to keep this video short and crisp based on all the feedback I've received from you guys, so I hope you like it. 
I've already made a video on how to build real-time apps using CDC. It's not exactly microservices, but you might like it. Also, I'll put down the links to the blogs I've been referring to, which includes the post on event-driven architectures. So if you can't wait for the next video, you should probably check it out. Okay, that was a ton of links. Don't forget to keep coding and stay curious.